Yes, greetings and blessings and welcome to the Justice and Healing, Judgment and Heaping Naya Bingi Initiative. Today is July the 25th and for those who have been following us over the past six months or so, they know that we are involved, pretty much involved in the opening of our initiative or 28 days of uh, spiritual rituals, economic planning, uh, showcasing the things that are happening in St. Lucia to indi indigen indigenous people. Listen, it's been a long day, long weekend. And so before saying too much, I just want to first say blessings and welcome, greetings and love. I greet all in the power of the Trinity. Highly Celeste the first, men in Asphalt. And I give thanks for life and for strength and for the people of St. Lucia who have been with us on this journey so as you know we say one perfect love and we introduce to you the irate of love through the vehicle of our own family who has joined us all the way from Jamaica my brother Dr. Jelani Naya who has joined us for the justice and healing initiative we have been building this up we have been talking about it Although I'm a little tired, I am most happy to have my brother in studio. Brother Jelani, greetings and welcome. Greetings, my brother, and greetings to your audience. It's indeed a pleasure to be here this afternoon, this night. What well, take you into St. Lucia, by the way? Why are you here in St. Lucia? Why am I here? Yes. I um, wanted to talk to the people. Uh, well, you know, visioning is an important part of I and I consciousness, and I think I was happy to be a, have been a part of... Uh, a really purposeful vision that was um, carefully crafted about 13 months ago mm -hmm. after we came out of a process that was really quite inspirational but also helped us to take charge, to take responsibility for some of the things that we are aspiring to see some of the things mm. that we hope to achieve. And I think also recognizing that um, we are of age, you know. Um, both you and I have gray beards. My, yeah, mine yours is, is, gray? Yours I is also mine was white, rather. Yours is white. I'm the silver lion, man. What are you talking about? <laughs> All right, so. White. Mine gray, yours silver, but um, no longer that black. And well, what that suggests is that we do have a journey that we've covered and hopefully one that we can cover um, ourselves um, seeking carefully to employ lessons we've learned and to seek to extract some of the ambition, some of the aspirations that we hold dearly. I think we have seen various generations contribute um, in this instance, I'm here for the 130th anniversary of His Majesty's birth. And I, for one, have seen various celebrations in Jamaica of that. I think um, at this point in our own journey, uh, we certainly can create a moment of um, attention, awareness, uh, some ideas for young persons who themselves have just started their own journey. Uh, and I think that's really what each, each generation does, you know. It imagines a way to impact the now. We are now in the process of a, another celebration of His Imperial Majesty's birth. But we're using that in the context of a range of issues that not only related Rastafari itself, but um, the Black Lives Matter context um, to provide a sense of what we understand the teachings of His Majesty to offer, not just to us, but to society. And, um, you know, all of that felt important enough for us to embark on a number of planning missions, um, employment of various kinds of resources. I think we have a book that is about to be um, presented itself. 
Uh, so there have been a range of things happening, and the meeting last year that suggested we come back this year was actually a part of a sequence of um, collaborative things that we've been doing for a number of years. Um, in a sense, I think, you know, we've come of age. Um, as time. much as I know you don't like that age. No, man, I know we, we don't running away from it. It's just a joy to hear you admit that you are now an age of a man. I, and I just I, have so much youth tonight. But on, a, on, on the notes of much of what you touched on, at least one of the specific notes is the fact that we came into St. Lucia for the specific purpose mm -hmm. of engaging a justice and healing initiative within the context of the 130th birth anniversary of Emperor Haile Selassie I. Tell us who are the responsible people, just in terms of um, cultural identity and why. Um, well, the fact is that we've been affiliated with a number of different entities, um, all on the same mission. Uh, we have been for a while trying to develop uh, an, an academic space um, among persons who are already working in academia. And what that has meant is for a number of years we have been working together with that work having actually got intensified during the period of lockdown. So lockdown was rather constructive as we made good technology I'm sorry, my brother. You, you, I keep hearing we. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm talking about um, colleagues who work at various universities. Yourself is one of them. Are you Rast speaking of Rastafari colleagues? Yeah, Rastafari okay, so colleagues. It's a Rastafari community then? Yeah, right? Rastafari community. And, 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 and this is really the point that being an academic, um, working on Rastafari, um, being Rastafari, being embedded in the community, all of those various points of location actually are good networking space. And someone like yourself, someone like Ras Robbie, and others who we have worked with consistently have actually come into this space. And it's in this space that this kind of idea has crystallized how it is that we can bring our own practice to a wider community and also create a community in a sense. Um, and that community that we're seeking to create is an actual Rastafari, a university that's not dependent on other institutions, but have its own identity, its own charter, its own student-based curricula. Um, things that are expected of us as a community have been expected of us. Yeah. Um, we've variously tried to construct from kindergarten to secondary um, I think we do have the resources to move into tertiary um, development. And um, the space that has evolved over the last decade, decade and a half, has really brought together like minds, persons like yourself and others, internationally um, located. So we have persons that we work with in the UK through the Ethiopian World Federation and other um, quasi-university entities, persons we work with in the United States, um, New York, Washington, Florida as main hubs, persons we work in the Caribbean with, um, University of the West Indies networks, and those outside of that ne network, um, uh, Rastafari, uh, Caribbean Rastafari organization as one of those, ICAR as another, um, Rastafari, Millennium Council, or that kind of affiliation in Jamaica, Nabingi, um, Theocracy Reign. So there have been a, a, a number of um, intersections that our various work within the community have afforded us. Um, and this is what we have really been galvanizing. Um, I, I think you are, you know, well positioned here in the media, but you've been in this space for a while, in the Washington space, as a major um, central hub for Rastafari administrative, online, and outreach work. So I, I think all of that, interestingly, um, got a serious thrust forward through the availability of more online time during lockdown. And as you know, you are a, you know, a sucker for hard work, so you've pushed even harder 
and we have launched a university during that time. And it's a part of that university initiative that brings us here, not just only to celebrate the Jaja and I initiative, but to share that with uh, a set of students, which is always our objective, to be seeking to create a space for mentorship, um, for training, for um, inspiration. So, so we have young people with so us. So give, thanks, give, give thanks. thanks for that very much, very much. But I wanted to pivot to that a little later because I want to remind St. Lucians that for over four months we have been talking about the Justice and Healing, Judgment and Heaping Naya Bingi initiative. We promised some things, and I want to just happily report to the St. Lucian family and our international viewers that we are now delivering. We're on the ground. We're in day three of our justice and healing rituals that includes spiritual rituals. It will include the showcasing and screening of a documentary on the atrocities committed against Rastafari people and people who... Uh, have experienced um, uh, injustices who Rastafari themselves embody as examples of victors over systems of oppression. We certainly have an economic symposium where we're not just talking and having the rituals, but we're positioning ourselves to do some of the things that will take our family or people to the next and the new, part of our own framing. Because for too long, our people have been just sitting and coping and evolving, if you will, within a system of injustice. So uh, while you have not necessarily said that, I want to remind the family that this has been what we have said we were doing intentionally. We said we'd bring people in, and we have a few people, you know, we have quite a few, and we're going to showcase some of that as the months unpack. Yes? Yeah, in fact, um, I must, you know, congratulate the team on the ground here because everyone might have a sense that Rastafari is a strong force out of Jamaica. And for us to shift attention to St. Lucia at this time for this justice and healing um, Nyabingi uh, celebration with imperatives that are important, not just for St. Lucia, but Rastafari everywhere, not just Rastafari, Africans everywhere, true, humanity true, in a sense. Um, it says something about what we were able to achieve here in St. Lucia, the kind of orientation, focus, infrastructure that um, we're working with. And the, the essence of what that space offers us to pivot um, forward. In fact, I'm, I'm really very inspired by the, um, the representation we've had on the ground um, the Ethiopia Africa Black International Congress, along with Theocracy Rain, Order of the Nabingi, really guiding us through our ritual celebrations of Nabingi as a really calming but, but, but quite fiery, um, if we understand the concept of the Nabingi, um, commencement of this um, larger process that will have discussions which are specifically themed on a range of things related to our forward motion. But the, the ritual cannot be uh, de-emphasized as an important uh, symbolic and, 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 and physical imperative that it cuts and clears, it, it reharmonizes, it, it brings a certain euphoria within the community itself because we have, we've done what is a cultural celebration, but this has intense um, political weight um, for what it, 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 it achieves. Of yeah. course, of course. And not only just the political, as I heard you say, and the symbolism, but it certainly is spiritual. It's an African-centered mm. spirituality that allows us to pivot towards something that is indigenous to yeah. us, something that is created by us. And as all other forms of spirituality has its foundation in humanity and people doing things for themselves, this initiative and the Rastafari community leading this initiative speaks to 
as we have been talking to you directly, speaks to our own ability to do, to achieve, to create. And so, family, as was promised then, we say we're doing a justice and healing initiative. We're on the way. We have Dr. Jelani Naya with us, who has been on the ground. He was on the ground last year, was part of the visionary who brought to forth, brought forth the sound, collaborated in the bringing forth of the sound that we are going to do something in St. Lucia. We have been on the ground in St. Lucia, getting it done. We're now doing it live, fulfilling then the mandate that was initiated through our own thoughts and of course it's now our deeds and you know the the st lucian um, community is going to recognize the importance of this moment not immediately perhaps but um the attention that rastafari has brought to a certain kind of gavi isk um, approach that um none but, but ourselves can free our minds and the importance of that pan-african frontier that that we we do have to do it arm in arm True. you know and um we have to put our own resources to the True. helm and it it those are the the features that i think i i'm i'm most inspired by that you know we've we've had good collaborations across the board you have made good the inroads that can help us in total but this has been largely an initiative driven from our own capacity yeah. um with yeah. with you as an excellent um field marshal so to speak um honorable right honorable priest kailash and his family as excellent um uh proprietors for this mission in, 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 in their not just visioning but ensuring that there is the, the appropriate level of professional and um, you know um, regional uh, compliance within this you know I'm, I'm glad to see that we've got contingencies coming in from the Bahamas from Jamaica you know from Guadeloupe Martinique you know this is truly uh, you know, I've been involved with many Rastafari gatherings, and this one is special. You know, it, it, we, we are in a space that promises so much in terms of what Rastafari is about and the kind of methodology and example that has been set really is not just an inspiration for the, the, the community itself, as in Rastafari, but for the widest possible community. So. Yeah, man, Ross Wayne, I am, I am part St. Lucia now. Yeah, know, man, yeah, man. Full. Well, I, I was asked to authorize your citizenship. All right, give thanks. So, <laughs> you know, officially, St. Lucia helped me officially welcome Dr. Jelani Naya yeah, man, as a Lucian. Yeah, I mean, he's it's not going to give up. He's going to be a dual citizen, if yeah. you will. But give thanks. I am happy you also mentioned the fact that we have contingents of um, Rastafari representatives, ambassadors that comes from the Ethiopia Black International Congress, comes from the Naya Bingi family. Uh, we have people just flying in today. Mm -hmm. You know, we have people who are coming into St. Lucia for the sole purpose of sharing in the justice and healing initiative. And St. Lucia then becomes ground zero, mm -hmm. ground zero for spiritual rituals. Ground Zero for an economic symposium that speaks to our possibilities. And people believe that the world is already made, but we're going to recreate yeah. it in the image of goodness because something has been amiss in what the structures uh, we've been functioning in those structures, something has been amiss. And it speaks to justice, yes? Yeah. Black justice, indigenous people's justice, yes? African people's justice. And of course, the embodiment of that is the Rastafari family. Dr. Jelani Naya, I wanted to stay in studio with us you know, because we have some, some more excitement and surprises to unpack to our St. Lucian family, to our international family. But we're going to take a little break right, and then we'll get forward. Yeah, All right? Blessed love, my Lord. This year, we are conducting the 2022 National Population and Housing Census 
We will be visiting every house in St. Lucia to conduct the census. When the enumerators visit you, they will introduce themselves, show their ID, the appointment letter, and explain the reason for their visit. Also on the ID, you will see details of the executing agency, which is the central statistical office. They will be dressed in a green shirt, branded with the crest of the St. Lucia 2022 Population and Housing Census. Please cooperate with the enumerators and be truthful with your responses. All information will be treated in the strictest confidence. The information provided is to help government better serve your community. Anu Kote Setlisi. Bob and Dave were very proud to buy their mom a new energy saving fridge with lots of smart settings. They remember the old ways of energy saving. Mom always said, Close the fridge, you're wasting current. Smart advice then, smart advice now. Close the fridge, you're wasting current. Saving energy is what's smart. My name is Henson Hunt, the owner of Fun Food St. Lucia, and we're currently the distributors of Island Pops in St. Lucia. All right, on display for this curry fair, we have a whole range of local flavors, which include soursop, tamarind, unbelievable, we still have sorrel, um, we also have passion fruit, and we have also included some of the flavors that the young people like, which is cookies and cream, um, peanut, um, strawberry, and strawberry passion. All right, when you think about fun times, you think about island pops. Think about it, fun pops is probably, or if not the most healthiest popsicle, not on island, but most likely in the world. The reason why, we, we use the best ingredients, quality um, fruits, and also, we have included um, one of the superfoods, which is Simos, in all of our popsicle mix. All right, currently Island Pops is available in all of all of the Massey supermarkets, so from Rodney Bay um, down to Soufre. And if not, you could contact us on IG, which is Island Pops underscore SLU, or you could also get us on Facebook. If not, you could contact us seven two nine zero six four one. In the event of a disaster, you have thought about emergency exits for your company staff and visitors. But do you check them regularly? Is your company really prepared for a disaster? Download your checklist at CaribbeanChambers.net. Yes, St. Lucia, welcome again. Hey, Ross Wayne promising you some things, you know. And one thing Ross Wayne is very serious about is the delivering on promises. So we talk about justice and healing. We say we're going to establish a secretariat, we establish the Ubuntu Rastafari Cultural Center. We say we're going to bring in books for the learning, edification, if you will, of the people. So you can come and sit down in a space, we delivered on that. We say we're going to provide food for the body to condition the body in the right way so that you can position yourself for what next is coming in our creation. And the right and our pre scale has the food of seven delivered on that. We said we're going to organize a justice and healing initiative so that we can move from the old and the past to the next and the new. And we're right in the midst of that. We're already three days into that. It's 28 days of unpacking right at the Mount Kailash Rejuvenation Center, where we have called for justice and healing, and we have brought in the spiritual bandwagons. Yes, people who are battle axe ready, and they're ready to stand up for your justice and your healing, and have already started that process. In the midst of all of them, though, 
are curious young minds coming from all over the place, but particularly in, the, in this instance, we have students coming from the John Hopkins University. They're not just coming because they come for carnival. They come to sit with Rastafari at the Mount Kailash Rejuvenation Center to learn about how they themselves can be part of the next and the new because they are the generation to come. And not just their chaperones, but their teachers and people who have been helping to mold their minds so that they can be responsible citizens, good citizens. Join them. Two such beautiful souls are joining Ross Wayne and the Calabash TV audience right here in studio. My beloved goddess sister, Kalia Set Amen. Dr. Kalia Set Amen, by the way, John Hopkins University and Dr. Rob, Robbie Shilly. <laughs> My virgin, brother Robbie. Give thanks. How are you all doing? Both of you doing? Excellent. Family. Wonderful few days here in St. Lucia. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, Brother Robbie, mm -hmm. this is just, I, I, I have a way of airing dirty laundry. Uh -oh. And so, <laughs> no, St. Lucia, you know, we're family, so we can talk like family. Here I am thinking that, anyway, I'm not going to air that not laundry too. too no. Yeah, not today. <laughs> Dr. Alia said, how are you doing, my dear sister? I'm doing and how is St. Lucia? How you feel Saint, about St. Lucia? St. Lucia has already rejuvenated me so deeply in this very short period of time. The sunshine, the wind, the breeze, the wonderful people. Every person I've encountered has had a welcoming Give spirit, thanks. a good word. Give it's thanks. been tremendous. Give, and you're located where at this time? At the Mount Kailash Rejuvenation Center? At the Mount Kailash Rejuvenation Center, which has been a place of peace and healing for us in this short time. Mm -hmm. uh, what Priest Kailash and his family and staff have created there is nothing short of marvelous. Gifted. It's a feat of engineering. It is a story of vision. Um, and it will be an institution and a place of gathering for St. Lucians and people all over the world for generations to come. Gifted. Blessed love. Yeah, man, St. Lucia, that's part of your own offering, you know. A man of your soil is powerful enough to draw, well, let's first say Brother Robbie and Sister Kalia said, to draw them into a space. Dr. Jelani and I, to draw them into your space. Ross Wayne, to draw all of us into a space for justice and healing. That is vision. That is work. That is St. Lucia, the next and the new. So Sister Kali, I said, yes, Ross <laughs> Wayne. you know, <laughs> I'm just pleased that you came in, but the reason you came in, could you explain it? Well, uh, we are both here um, by virtue of a lot of planning work that was yes. mentioned in the prior segment to uh, gather together students for an educational experience as a part of the larger Justice and Healing Initiative. Um, I'm so pleased that with my colleague here, we've had the opportunity uh, to gather together students who are connected to the um, Department of Africana Studies at Johns Hopkins University. Yes, so they're also connected to other kinds of disciplines. Um, and we received funding to support them in coming here uh, to help sure. to respond to their yearning to learn more about black peoples globally, our lifestyles, our practices, our political struggles, our aspirations and dreams. And mm -hmm. so they've gathered here uh, and we are here supporting them in this really critical inquiry that could only happen here in St. Lucia. I tell you what, this, this, my beloved sister is ready for the program. <laughs> yes, in <laughs> fact, most people would not know, but they could assume easily just from the way she speaks that she's an eloquent orator and... I thank you. <laughs> and? <laughs> and is more. <laughs> a master <laughs> media <laughs> communicator. <laughs> yes? So we give thanks for your presence and you made mention of Brother Robbie who has been sitting just glowing in the joy and the benefits of St. Yeah, Lucia. I've just, just been sitting listening to Dr. Carly I said, yeah. just thinking, oh, if I could be so eloquent. Brother Robbie, <laughs> not only are you a professor at John Hopkins University, you're also part and parcel of the School of Sacrament Rastafari mm -hmm. University. Could you unpack 
that a, a bit for I and I and mm. the people of St. Lucia, please. Yes, so, I mean, uh, coming on from what um, Rastilani was saying, um, one, of, one of the things that I think is important for the students um, is, to, is to get a sense that critical knowledge cultivation uh, an overstanding of the world of, of, of where injustice happens and how justice can be sought um, is something that doesn't just happen in the, the hallowed and the, the, the sometimes um, sanitised halls of academia um, but it happens everywhere and it happens um, with peoples who have got hard fought for traditions which are, which are carried down um, which preserve people against all odds and that the, the genius of creative survival um, is in places like Mount Kailash, right? And, um, and it's important for the students to, to, to realize that, not so that they can just abandon their studies, but that they can dismiss the idea that uh, only a certain few people with particular qualifications sitting in particular offices know how to run the world. Um, so it's a democratic aspiration, actually, mm. that when these students go into um, you know, wh whatever kind of positions of power they have, when they, see, when they see people who might not seem to have power, when they see them, they're going to have to take them seriously and listen very attentively and take these people as actually you know, agents of their own destiny themselves. So that, 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 that for me is one of the big things about the School of Sacrament. Give thanks, give thanks. So through the framing and the work of the School of Sacrament, we've been doing multiple events, webinars, uh, virtual classrooms, if you will, but now we have done the physical spacing, bringing students right here mm -hmm. into um, St. Lucia at the Mount Kailash Rejuvenation Center mm -hmm. to have what? An immersive experience. Explain what is happening with the students and yes break forward some of the rituals and things that they may have participated mm. in? So I think what's special about um, what we've done this time is, is that we've um, put the students in a position where the first encounter they have is with, is with rituals, with ices, with the, the, with the, the Bobo Shanti ices on the first light and then the, the Naya Bingy one on the next light. I think my, my producer could easily show some of the, the images of what um, that looks like, yes? Yeah. That's right. Yes, so go ahead yes. my brother. These are yeah, uh, yes. images of the students. Yes, right. yes, yes. And so they, they haven't been inducted. Oh, that's the emphasis. Give thanks. Yes, so, that, so they haven't been inducted in a kind of abstract fashion, right? They've been inducted in a very concrete fashion. And that includes also um, um, Ras Vision um, taking I and I on a on a on a trek through Mount Kailash just yesterday, um, pointing out all the uses of the the trees and the plants and the herbs, and giving them a real sense of, of grounding in a place with people, you know, coming together to try and make something happen. So so it's and then there's the food aspect. Um, you know, m many of them might not have understood um, or might not have come across food which might look different <laughs> to what they're used to. So, you know, like, uh, you know, food can be very, very sanitized and processed, especially in the U.S. and many places, but especially in the U.S. and students might not see what actual real food might look like. Mm. And, and I just mm. want to add to that as well because, as you mentioned, we went on a wonderful trek uh, with Ross Vision, mm -hmm. uh, who pointed out all of the, the flora that was around us. And it was a way of thinking about learning as fundamentally functional mm -hmm. and applied and useful to your life. I think uh, for so many young people, there is a decoupling of what they are learning in school uh, from what they actually need to survive and build a meaningful life. Mm -hmm. And here in these interactions uh, with these botanical experts and mm. healing experts at Mount Kailash, they are seeing the ways in which 
uh, you can build a life of meaning, engaging with the environment around you, the community around you, and what useful knowledge looks like. Mm -hmm. I, I'm very pleased with those deliveries, especially because it speaks to what the next and the new potentially is. In fact, we have launched the next and the new. But for many people in St. Lucia, they may have forgotten that we have been creators. In fact, many people across uh, the African and African um, the, the world out, I don't want to say diaspora. Mm -hmm. it, it, more and more diaspora mm -hmm. as is the <laughs> sound away to I. But nonetheless, um, we are creators, or people are creators. And what we saw, what uh, Dr. Jelani spoke about earlier, my brother Bonganir, is that we always had the opportunities if we just employ ourselves in the spaces. Yes, we're challenged for resources. We're challenged for a multiplicity of mm -hmm. things. But those challenges did not stop our ancestors. Mm -hmm. They did not stop us from becoming, from taking the, the, the lowest of the low and create something excellent from it. Yes, sir. And so uh, I recall Honorable Priest Kaelin talking about the mountain experience, just going up there and seeing the land and then making a decision about buying it and then mm -hmm. from buying it to what is created structurally. That's the example, the modeling for the justice and healing. Yes, sir. Because we need to look at our lives in the context of its, its impoverished state, if it is, mm -hmm. and then take that life and recreate it because the possibilities are still endless. Mm -hmm. If we but look to ourselves, within ourselves, for the divine within us. No, that's right. And, and, and I think for the students, I mean, you know, they're, they're coming from a university, Johns Hopkins, it's a, you know, it's a rich university, right? Um, and what they're coming and seeing is that, that kind of genius, that kind of creativity, that kind of irony, right, mm. um, is creating something which they might have thought was impossible. Yeah. So they're, they're, not, they're not in spaces. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm talking, you know, I'm talking for them now, so, so if they're watching, forgive me, right? But many of our students aren't in spaces which are spaces which create, which necessarily have to create. They're in spaces which have already been created, right, for a particular purpose, and then they go through them. And so they don't get a sense of transformation about what they could or what they might need to do. And so these examples here in St. Lucia, in, in Mount Kailash, with the I, with the Ubuntu Cultural Centre, are examples which they can take forward for the rest of their life, because they can say, well, if that was done with, with, with such hardship, right, and if, if that was triumphant, then, then those of us who have a bit more, we don't have any excuse. True. Right? True. And I suspect that is the reason why um, St. Lucia was so imprinted on our consciousness coming out of a retreat at the Mount Kailash Rejuvenation Centre mm -hmm. where the, Jelani and myself, among others, you know, made the decision, along with Priest Kailash, along with Priest Kailash, just made the decision that it's right, considering it's 13 decades in the life of Haile Selassie I, 135 years in the life of Honorable Marcus Garvey, and within the same spacing of emancipation as a concept of liberation the question becomes how do liberated people act mm -hmm. yes. and I think um, that's especially important for young people at this time they are pondering the ways in which they will express their struggle for justice today and it's critical that they recognize themselves on a continuum of time and of space. Yes, yes, and yes. to come here and to engage with people who are a part of the very same tradition out of which these young people come, but haven't made the connection before, yes. is a critical thing to see and engage with. Um, you asked earlier in the program about some of the observations yes. from the Nyabingi gathering and we had a conversation, the students and I, earlier today, talking about some of those observations. And here they were able to see a model of 
collaborative learning, of community building, of, of holding up space for each other that respects your fundamental humanity uh, in ways that look very different from what mm -hmm. they're used to mm -hmm. at home. But they can bring those observations back with them and hopefully that will shape the ways in which they organize and the ways in which they ag agitate mm -hmm. for justice in a loving manner True. with mm -hmm. an open and outstretched hand that they've seen modeled by the Rastafari here in St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. Give thanks. You've said it so well, Sister Kalia said, and as you're speaking, it appears to me to make a further call to the family here in St. Lucia that right here young people have the resource in Mount Kailash Rejuvenation Center, at least for the next 25 days, yes, of the 28 days initiative come come even early before we our students from john hopkins go back so you can interact you could have that immersive experience because they traveled very long distances just to learn something about the rastafari collaboration that's taking place mm -hmm. and when i say it's a collaboration because we've brought in rastafari groups from bahamas from jamaica from god as dr jelani said from multiple spaces, but also locally. The Nyabingi family, the ICAR organization, the Caribbean Rastafari organization, the Ethiopia Black International Congress, among others, Ethiopian World Federation, Sister Evans, Sister Viola, we love you. Know. Yeah, I mean, people have come together with differences, but overlooking those differences and looking at the common mm -hmm. goal, mm -hmm. the common interest, and working toward them in a justice and healing for that is what saint lucia means and the opportunity then to participate in the same way your students from john hopkins is participating it is now open to saint lucians i want to extend that invitation then if you can reach up the mountain get up the mountain if you cannot reach up the mountain but you have the intention to come give i man a call two eight seven zero six three seven Two eight seven zero six three seven. Give us a call. We're still welcoming you to come to learn something with us. But mm -hmm. but the Rabbi, Doctor Kalia said, Amen. Don't leave yet. We're just going to take a small break. Give thanks. Right. Sounds good. Thanks. <laughs> what happened? No, so why you get up? I said don't leave. This year, we are conducting the 2022 National Population and Housing Census. We will be visiting every house in St. Lucia to conduct Good the morning. census. When the enumerators visit you, they will introduce themselves, show their ID, the appointment letter, and explain the reason for their visit. Also on the ID, you will see details of the executing agency, which is the Central Statistical Office. They will be dressed in a green shirt, branded with the crest of the St. Lucia 2022 Population and Housing Census. Please cooperate with the enumerators and be truthful with your responses. All information will be treated in the strictest confidence. The information provided is to help government better serve your community. Anu Kote Setlisi. Bob and Dave were very proud to buy their mom a new energy-saving fridge with lots of smart settings. They remember the old ways of energy saving. Mom always said, close the fridge, you're wasting current. Smart advice then, smart advice now. Close the fridge, you're wasting current. Saving energy is what's smart. My name is Henson Hunt, the owner of Fun Food St. Lucia, and we're currently the distributors of Island Pops in St. Lucia. All right, on display for this car affair, we have a whole range of local flavors, which include soursop, tamarind, unbelievable, we still have sorrel, um, we also have passion fruit, 
And we have also included some of the flavors that the uh, young people like, which is cookies and cream, um, peanut, um, strawberry, and strawberry passion. All right, when you think about fun times, you think about island pops. Think about it, Fun Pops is probably, or if not the most healthiest popsicle, not on island, but most likely in the world. The reason why, we, we use the best ingredients, quality um, fruits, and also we have included um, one of the superfoods, which is Simos in all of our popsicle mix. All right, currently Island Pops is available in all of, all of the Massey supermarkets. So from Rodney Bay um, down to Sufre. And if not, you could contact us on IG, which is Island Pops underscore SLU. Or you could also get us on Facebook. If not, you could contact us 729-0641. Thanks again. We are at the Calabash TV station with the Justice and Healing, Judgment and Heaping Nyabingi Initiative. The program is about justice. It is about healing. And we've activated the reality of justice and healing right here in St. Lucia at the Mount Kailash Rejuvenation Center. Ongoing right now. We have spiritual rituals going on. We're not saying you come and join Rastafari and be Rastafari. No, we say bring your goodness. Bring your energy of goodness. Be a contributor to the next and the new by being involved in not just the conversation but the spiritual energy of goodness that Rastafari represents. In studio with I, as was promised, are my colleagues, Sister Dr. Kalia Set Amen, Brother Dr. Robbie Shillia, Dr. Brother Bonganiya, <laughs> July. We have fun with each other, you know. We're not going to go on like we stuck up. It's real people, but they're brilliant minds. And they have established modalities through which they can reach young minds and we want to share them with the Caribbean and the St. Lucian family in particular. So, I and I was talking. Bonganiya, we started with the eye. A visionary, a man who spoke and it became because you gave I the mandate. Just for the record, if anyone loves Raswin so far, Bongani is responsible for Raswin coming into St. Lucia by introducing I to the right honorable priest Kailash. Yes, and he has inspired me to do a lot of good work. So, Bongani, we fight every now and again, but hey. Oh, we don't fight. We really just reason a little intensely. But, um, <laughs> you know, it's it's good to see a process unfold and develop. Um, Ras Robbie, um, my sister, uh, um, Kalia said, I've just recently met, but I'm hoping that this is the start of uh, continuous um, networking. Um, th the point is that there are not many of us who do what we do. And if we can continue building on those networks um, to make real vision, um, which Ras Wayne is, you know, is, is a consummate man in nailing vision, and that's really a commendable um, skill. But the, the point is that, and, and I'm going to go very quickly, My, I have a theory that Rastafari is really a teacher of Africa, um, a teacher of African liberation. Um, a teacher of the post-colonial African strength and power. And um, that teaching doesn't mean that we are suggesting that everyone will be Rastafari. But we certainly think that Rastafari has contributed in a certain way to post-colonial progress, mm -hmm. that there's so much strength that can be drawn from that. And the work being done here in St. Lucia is at the cutting edge of what we want to see happen. And it has been really a good synergy over the last 10 years, or a little less, to be working steadily with a set of persons who are into 
manifestology, you know, oh, yeah. not just mm. the imaginary, not that one. but but the the actual, you know, they say that faith is the evidence of things that are imagined and the mm. substance of things that are hope, something like that. The Christians know what I'm saying, but to to have that capacity to see tangible outcome, um, resourced by hard work, is always um, tremendous. So I'm 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 just you know, I'm trying to chill now that Wesleyan has done so much work. Well, and it's it's the myself. inspiration of the family, and we yeah, do man. what I and I do simply because the family. We know we can rely on the family. Yeah. Our priest Kailash uh, certainly steps very highly in that space, but it's tangible outcomes, resourced by hard work. I love that, Dr. Mm -hmm. Kalia said, my sister. This is what we have been talking it's about. It's true, and I and I and I love the framing, especially that you offer of Rastafari as a teacher of, of Africa and of uh, an ethic of liberation um, as an everyday lived reality. Um, and I want to pick up on the, the term teacher because I don't identify as Rastafari, though I am learning more and more every day <laughs> and am migrating over. Um, but throughout my life course, I have had critical, seminal experiences uh, where I have been shaped to my core, um, my political commitments, my personal values have been shaped through interactions at different points in my life with Rastafari, who have served as teachers and mentors mm -hmm. for me. And they did not position themselves uh, as proselytizers. They came offering uh, words of truth. They came offering me guidance and a way to think about the possibilities for my life using a, a, an inspired language that no one else could offer. Mm. And I share that to say to those who may be watching the program right now that you needn't be Rastafari to feel comfortable, welcome, invited, and transformed mm -hmm. by the message mm -hmm. and the people you will mm -hmm. find there. What a beautiful delivery. I mean, I could not say better and would not even try to say more to that except to say the gates are open wide and Ras Wayne bid you come in the short terminal, because remember, Mount Kailash is a special rejuvenation center. That will be closed off soon. Come, come see what Dr. Kalia said. Means what she has experienced, what she is experiencing, and what her students, and that of Brother Robbie, students of Brother Robbie also, mm. are experiencing today. Brother Robbie. Mm. Well, I wanted to pick up on something that, um, that, that Dr. Kalia said, just said. Um, and, and give it a different kind of spin. Same thing, but a different spin. Um, and, and coming out of the UK, um, Rastafari movement in the UK has had a, a molecular impact. So, um, as the, I was saying about having these um, seminal experiences with Rastafari at particular points, there's a slightly different thing in the UK, which is that the Rastafari has embedded itself in the culture in such a micro way that there's a whole generation of ones who who might not even know how much that they've been actually affected and directed by Rastafari. And and in some ways, you know, we might say, oh, well, you know, don't, don't we get the glory and all that. But in another way, it's, it's actually the triumph, right? It's the victory. Because because it's it, it's given old generations different possibilities on on a micro level. You know, Robbie, what you said reminds me of the same rituals that Braswain speak of. You know, it it's something to watch the ordered procession of bubble shanty reverencing not just the, mm -hmm. the moving into the Sabbath, but moving throughout the Sabbath. And this is a, it's a musical vigil that has 
biblical and other inspirational aspects mm -hmm. along with singing, drumming, um, the cymbal. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that, that looks just like symbolic ritual. Mm -hmm. But it is the heart that goes into that process. Mm -hmm. And in the same way, people don't even know what, how it is that they're benefiting mm -hmm. from these, you know, seemingly abstract rituals that um, are really a part of that ordering of our ambition. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the more revival and um, Pentecostal terms is cutting and clearing, mm -hmm. and you know, more or less um, making clear the mm -hmm. path for what it is that mm -hmm. we're seeking to achieve. So I, I wanted to pick up on the fact that, yeah, there, there are so many things that are uh, held by Rastafari as a kind of custodian for those who don't have this time. Mm -hmm. um, that I, I kind of, that, mm. yeah. Yes. Give thanks, my brothers. And I just, you know, in sealing, I love my um, producer to help in placing on the screen the... Uh, images of what is actually happening throughout the month of uh, July into August. But Bonganea, my brother, just used the term. He said Rastafari is engaging, reviving the spirit of ambition in our people. Yes, that's a paraphrase. He didn't quite say it that way. But he simply said that the possibilities that our ambitions engage, yes, at least in the mind, Rastafari now activating those things in reality. And this moment, St. Lucia, I want to remind you, between the 22nd and the 28th, we're having the celebrations, the rituals, spiritual rituals. It don't mean that by coming at our rituals, you're going to turn Rasta and you don't want to. Just come with your goodness. It's goodness we're defending. We're saying come and experience something that may and should, if you come with the right energy, should impact your future. So, and the future of St. Lucia, and indeed the region, and perhaps the world. We're having those rituals all the way up to the 28th of July. On August 1st, we will have an Emancipation March. We deem it as black over white as a march, but it really simply means good over evil, because the representation in our experiences have come through a white supremacist system of evil against us. And we've always sought to do good. That is what Rastafari represents. Then August 2nd to the 4th, we're having a maritime economic, economic symposium where we look at our region and the possibilities of engaging the high seas for trade among ourselves so that we no longer have to think about food security as an issue, but we will be able to move indigenous products in and across the region in the model of the Right Honorable Marcus Mazaya Garvey. We'll also have a goddess retreat where we have our sisters come together on August 7th, coming together and just taking care of the divine woman. You're all so beautiful and just marvelous. And I mean, you produce in ways that man can't even start imagining. And of course, August 10th to 11th, we'll have rejuvenation activities. Rejuvenation activities includes just unpacking, taking care of yourself, relaxing, those, those kind of things, getting to Sufre and making sure that you can benefit from the St. Lucian experience. On August the 3rd, we're actually having a screening, public screening of a documentary created by the Ubuntu Rastafari Cultural Center and the Jajana Initiative that looks at justice and healing from the perspective of people who were victimized here in St. Lucia. Rastafari people who embodies the ordinary man. Victimized but now stand today as victors. And are prepared to look in the eyes of the system that victimized them and say, yes, we not only can but we did it. And on August from the 14th to the 17th, we will start focusing on the life of the right honorable Marcus Garvey and his legacy. Importantly, as we talk about a woman, we're going to look at the woman of, Mar of Garvey's life, mm -hmm. Amy Ashwood, Amy Jake, and that's a lecture that I will do myself, just to let those people know that I can do a little lecture in too. All right, so, you know, next what we will look at, we'll also look at the 
uh, revelation. So these are just images of what we just talked about. Emancipation March, the revelation revealing the truth documentary. It's in collaboration with the Cultural Development Foundation and the Ministry of Tourism. Um, certainly it will be a public screening, so the public is invited. And of course, the public, those who are resourced, those who have the intention to change the dynamic of economic reality in the region and indeed uh, St. Lucia in particular, come join us and sit and let us frame out this thing no, with the economic maritime initiative. We're going to not just talk, we're going to do things. As we have demonstrated over the past 13 months that we are doers, not sayers, naysayers, beggars, or liars. We say we're going to do something, we deliver on what we say. Rastafari have been doing that for 90 years now. And if given the chance, left alone and resourced, we will liberate black people and indeed all humanity this is the justice and healing forum join us against next strong again next strong as we deliver more of the same goodness it's a love rastafari give thanks blessed love family jelani naya doctor where are you could be, could be. <laughs> robbie but Shilia, and great. my <laughs> beautiful <laughs> sister kali i said i'm no. mad Doctor, <laughs> yeah, man, it's black people, you know, black liberation is here. Blessed love, family, Rastafari.